So in my discord I have a submit your card tab and let's just say I completely forgot about it. I checked one day, I have 20 plus cars to drive. To keep these comparisons consistent I'm not applying any tunes to any cars as well as I'm driving on the same course which is Levingham Raceway in Australia. So let's get to it starting with that S15. Now I'm not 100% sure who sent this car in but I feel like this test is gonna go pretty quick because there's honestly not much to compare. I mean, this is a good baseline because it's just a car you could buy off of someone's gum road, but for the most part, there's nothing inherently unique about this car. I think on this data set, it has 305 tires, which is humongous for an S15. You can see I'm kind of struggling to get it around some corners just because of how much grip it does have. Yeah, there's nothing really special about this car. I mean, it's just your run of the mill S15. There's no crazy body kit, no crazy wheels. It's just, yeah, your run of the mill S15, which is great for your base. Pretty sure it's all on VDC physics. It has VDC engine data, I know that for a fact. But yeah, overall, just a super solid little S chassis. Great thing to start off with, and this track is so fun. I'm gonna have a blast driving these cars around here. Our next car being SimDriver 061's Nissan S14 Koki with a Super Doof kit, pretty slick. And of course, pretty sure this comes with VDC 4.0 data and then a good old 2JZ. I'm gonna, slip, I'm gonna slip on the Simagic gloves because we're gonna be a little more casual than we were. Not gonna put the FIA certified uh, OMP gloves on there. Off the bat, I mean, the interior is pretty standard. Engine sounds the same as you normally hear. Feels about the same as you normally would. Out of all the VDC S chassis data, I would say the S14 drives the best. Now you might be saying, oh, well, they all are pretty much the same. True. However, the inertias are the S on each of them, my bad, is, uh, is a little bit different. And on the S14, it just feels the most balanced, the most complacent, if you will. It feels the easiest to drive out of all the other S chassis. I mean, I'm just hucking this John around and this thing is taking it like nothing. I wonder what tires this thing has because compared to that S15, like that S14, that, that S15 was wanting to kill me the whole time. Like it was trying to go straight and this thing, it's like, it loves to stay sideways. It feels super balanced, which is awesome. And the look of the car is pretty slick too. Cause I mean like, a little super doof kit, Koki. I mean, what more can you ask for in an S chassis? It's the best looking S14. Fight me, I don't care. Yeah, this thing drives fantastically. And I love how the interior is all buttoned up. It looks all nice, the gauges all work. It's great. Oh! Nearly slammed the wall there. So yeah, this, this S chassis out of the two we're gonna see today, definitely the best one. Simdrift61, thank you for sending in your car. This was fantastic. Let's move on to the next car. So after looking at the data, Riddy's M2 Eurofighter has a supercharged V8, as you can now hear. Um, and again, has VDC 4.0 data, which again, Best data. Can't argue with me, it's the best. Okay, gonna have to make a little seating adjustment. I'm not sitting inside the roll cage. I need to scoot back a little bit. No gauge cluster, which again, it doesn't change the driving aspect of the car. It's just nice to have, especially when you're in car. Don't know what's happening here with this dashboard. It looks like someone took a hammer and uh, smashed into it, which is rather unfortunate. Compared to say, compared to say the S14 we were just driving off the bat, the interior on that S14 was a little bit nicer. This sound, those 
Kind of cool. Never heard this one before. Oh man, I can already tell this thing's gonna be a handful to drive. I'm excited. All righty. Up to fourth. Chuck her in. Oh yeah, button. Always forget your fighters are extremely snappy VDC chat. Let's seize. Wow. Rookie mistake there. Rookie mistake spinning out. That's crazy. All right. Let's try again. Try not to spin out. Whoa. You tell out of the box this thing's got a good amount of grip. I mean, yeah, it's got a low revving 7,500 RPM supercharged V8 comparatively to like Jay-Z's and NA V8s, but this thing still rips. I clicked up to fifth. Let's see if we could chuck a backy in the first. Okay, nope, that, this isn't gonna work. Oh my God, it worked. Look at that, look at that. Okay, that was terrible, but anyway. This thing's fun. It's very snappy to drive, so for the beginner, it might be a little difficult. But overall, it's super fun. Because again, it is snappy, which I love snappy cars. They're just a little more difficult to drive than, you know, your average vehicle. Just huck it in. Oh yeah, bud. I just wish the interior was a little nicer. Like, I wish I had my gauge cluster where I could see things. But yeah, I really love the supercharged V8 platform because in the public pack VDC 4.0 cars, I know for a fact that that's an NA V8 rather than a supercharged V8. And yeah, this thing feels way nicer. Way easier to drive too when it comes to power and that sort of thing. It's still super snappy. Okay. Whoa, can I hold it? Oh, I'm off. All right, I think that's that's a good place to stop. Radies Eurofighter M2, fantastic car, very fun car, very snappy car. Interior, could use a couple things. Exterior wise, very beautiful looking car. Thank you, Riddy, for letting me drive your beautiful M2. Yeah, these, these Johns were all loose. That's not great, come on. Alrighty, tidy. Next up, we got Fuji's RTR, specifically Fujinami Models RTR. Now, this dude is very embedded into the sim and drift community. I know he helps out Hot Pit Auto Fest because the Round 4 trailer, I saw his logo on there. So, good for him. That's really funny. I love the character there having the uh, Hot Pit check within the car itself. The sound is questionable, to say the least. I mean, it's violent sounding, but is it good sounding? In my opinion, not particularly, but you got the dash. It unfortunately doesn't work. Digital instruments, I and I, we gotta fix it, gotta fix it. But yeah, let's give this thing a shot. From what it looks like, it has RY45 data on it, so it's got a ton of power, ton of torque, ton of awesomeness. Oh my God. I mean, you can feel the power. It just lights off the tires. It's pretty crazy. Super easy to drive due to the wheelbase and the VDC S550 physics. Again, this car using VDC physics. Oh yeah, it just, <laughs> it just goes. And the box, this car is probably one of the easier ones to drive besides that S14. I would say this is easier to drive just because it has a V8, no lag. It's just pin it and go. Oh yeah, look at that. I'm not gonna try to do a backy. Just a little high speed entry for the lads, for the lads. Look at that. Super easy to place this car in places. This car is awesome. And I mean, just looking at the interior model wise, it's not bad at all. It's actually pretty nice. It's pleasant to be inside of. Oh yeah, dude. This thing is so simple to drive. Ooh. Again on this corner, wide, what am I doing? Oh man. Yeah. Let's go Mustang. This thing's sick. Huge fan of this, Fuji. Love this car. Thank you for sending it over. Really appreciate it. This thing was awesome to drive. 
But our last car, this car, I'm the most excited for because it's one of my favorite cars of all time. And that, of course, being Jay Osborne's Cadillac CTSV wagon. Now, if you know me at all, I love me a good wagon. I've always loved wagons since I was a wee little lad. I actually want to buy a wagon right now. I want to get me an F30 wagon as a daily, a BMW F30, which is a three series. Looking at the car, um, love me a wagon. However, this paint is kind of questionable. There's some AO issues on the bumpers where the flake is just pixelized, as you can see in the bottom left of your screen right now. It's a little questionable. However, it's still a wagon, so I'm gonna enjoy this. Interior looks pretty stock. Doesn't look like anything crazy has been done, unfortunately. Um, would have liked some reshading, some retexturing. Got the stock steering columns um, bugging out there. As you can see, the symbols are moving around. That's not going to be distracting at all. I'm sorry to everyone at home. Let's give this thing a rip. So I can assume this car has Corvette data on it just because the CTSV and the Corvette, I think, shared a lot of similar things with each other. Don't quote me on that though, but it feels a lot like Corvette data right now. And you'd be doing this car a disservice if it wasn't on VDC 4.0 physics, which I'm pretty sure it is. And again, pretty positive it's Corvette data. Feels exactly like a Corvette. I mean, it's super easy to drive and it being longer than a Corvette makes it even easier to drive than a normal Corvette. Super forgiving and still tons of grip, tons of fun. Oh man, where are we going? We're going wide. That was actually pretty nice. Somehow this car is snappy, even though it's literally the size of a houseboat. But hey, I'm not here to complain. This thing's pretty nice. Model wise, it's not the best, but I'm gonna give you bonus points because of course this is a wagon. And if you don't know, I'm a slut for a wagon. Don't know if I mentioned it already. Just lights off and goes, dude. This thing is awesome. One more for the boys. Oh, that was bad. Whatever. Lights off. Yeah. I mean, solid driving car. Model-wise, it's not the prettiest, but drives great. It's an awesome car. Very unique, which I love a good, unique chassis. With that said, just for fun, which car was my favorite? You'd think I'd say the Cadillac, but inherently Fuji's Mustang was probably the best looking and the best driving. So I'm gonna have to give it to Fuji for that one. Anyways, if you want your car rated, go to my Discord, go to car submissions and submit your car to the Google forum where your car could be featured in the next video. And if you did enjoy this video, like, subscribe, comment if you enjoyed, comment if you want your car in. I mean, let me know. I'm trying out different styles of videos. Let me know what you thought of this one. That's then. I hope you enjoyed this video. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.